Dyslexia was recognised by the Ministry of Education in 2007. But the help children receive is still dependent on individual schools. My school memories were very, um, very much a lot of bullying because um, people thought that I was different. They didn't really pick up with my learning disability until I was about standard four and they actually made me repeat a year. When they got around to actually working out that I had this learning disability, it was too late for, for them to do what they needed to do to get me up with the other student. So being put in the special needs class at high school is very hard for me because, again, it was a lot more bullying, a lot more feeling left out and feeling left behind, so to speak. It made me feel like I was intellectually handicapped, um, which was, again, very difficult as well because I didn't want to be put into that category because I knew that I wasn't. When I left school, I didn't have school C. I didn't have any qualifications at all. I left school in the first term of seventh form because I said to my mum, I've had enough. School's getting me nowhere, it's doing nothing for me. I want to leave. I'll be better off leaving and getting a job and help, help support us as a family. So throughout, all throughout high school, I felt was a waste of my time. It was very, very difficult because I wanted to, wanted to do better and I knew I could do better, but I just needed that extra help and this is what Spout has given me. Mika is also dyslexic, but unlike Belinda, he is being taught in a supportive environment. We had concerns about uh, Mika's development when it got to the point where we didn't think that teachers, teacher aides were enough. Duncan, the deputy principal of Campbell's Bay on the North Shore, pointed out the spelled program and said, you know, this could be a good method for him to perhaps progress a little bit faster or, or define what the problem is. We got involved with the spell project through a librarian at our school. It was a holistic approach to that child. Um, the other part that really interested me was the fact that it was an approach where it was working with the school. So what's the first one? A, A, E, I, O, U. U. Right. The tutor, Marianne, is fantastic. She is involved in meetings with the parents, with us, liaises with the teacher, and that's been the key, that partnership with another agency and with the family. Achoo. Achoo, a bit louder. Mika needs a lot of help with spelling, um, with the order of letters, and he also needs help with writing stories, proofreading his work, punctuating it. Thank you very much, Mika. Bye-bye. Mika's parents have been so positive about the pilot project, but the majority of parents at school want the best for their child and have been really proactive with the school about providing some other opportunities for Mika. The one thing that they were concerned about was the stigma that would be attached to, OK, Mika is dyslexic, and what does that mean and what does um, what was his, uh, his friends and classmates think and say and, and so on. Um, but once you put that aside and say, right, the, the, uh, the issue has been defined, then you can put in plan, uh, place a plan that will um, help him. The teacher that's, um, that has the two pilot boys um, actually went to um, the introductory spelled course. There's some brilliant strategies that I know the classroom teacher has been using that Marianne's shown the boys that has worked wonders for other children in the class. So that's been another benefit to us really from the Spell Project. It's been offering us some um, other ways of how we can teach our children. And certainly that, that confidence uh, that he has, he has gained over the last year um, in terms of his reading, wanting to read and, and giving it a crack. Jeremy Drummond is the executive officer of Spelled Auckland and Spelled New Zealand. Jeremy became involved in the organisation after her own son Jamie was tutored by Spelled for his dyslexia. Spelled is a not-for-profit organisation. It's been going uh, in New Zealand for, for over 30 years and most areas of New Zealand are looked after by a local Spelled member association. The Spelled method is to use a basket of strategies that help the specific child. Jeremy's own son Jamie is dyslexic. From a very early age, Jamie was always extremely articulate. When he got to school, that lovely, lively imagination just seemed to shrivel up. And then as he progressed through his first year of school, 
his handwriting hadn't really improved, his spelling, very phonetic, there seemed to be more focus on all these red marks on the page saying what you've got wrong rather than what a great story. And so that was kind of demoralising too when he was writing stories because, you know, he'd be getting all these spelling errors in it. When I first went to school, it, I think it was a bit of a shock coming from kindergarten where it's more about playing and doing things at your own pace. Yeah. And almost immediately, I think I found myself behind quite quickly. And it's a bit of a self-esteem knocker when you, you know, at such a young age, you feel that you're dumber than anyone else. I couldn't understand why I was worse at reading. And reading in front of the class was like standing up blindfolded in front of a shooting range. People would make off comments, why can't you read? Or like, oh, you only got 10% on this. Often it's not intended to be malicious, but it still hurt. Jamie came home one afternoon and he was having difficulty with his homework. He always had difficulty with, with his homework. He just started crying and he just said, you know, Mum, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just dumb, you know, and, and I hate school. I hate being like this. And my heart just broke because I couldn't bear the thought that, you know, his self-esteem had dropped to such a level that, um, that he felt he felt dumb and he was, you know, he was obviously reduced to tears. At that stage I joined up with Spelled and he was assessed and they sort of worked through the different issues that he had. His personality just blossomed again. The instant boost to his confidence knowing that he had, you know, a support person there and someone was going to help him. Children with learning difficulties need help when they first show signs of not coping at school. If you pick these kids up when they're six, seven and eight, you're not dealing with the car wreck at 18, you know, or 14, with uh, angry, disillusioned, violent teenagers who know they've got something to offer, who know they're clever, but aren't able to produce what the school system is asking them to produce. My name's Andrew Beecroft, I'm the Principal Youth Court Judge. My role involves supervising the work of the youth courts throughout New Zealand. So that's dealing with 14, 15 and 16 year olds, some 12 and 13 year olds, our toughest young offenders. All that other experts tell us is you've got to be on the lookout for these sorts of things. Learning disabilities should be high on your radar screen. I know there's one study in New Zealand in 2009 for the 16 to 19 year old age group, I think goes as far as to say 90% or so of 16 to 19 year olds in prison, in custody, have some form of learning disability. Well, that's a hugely significant finding. I mean, everything you see in the youth court cries out for earlier, targeted, coordinated intervention. Spell's early intervention with Ryan means he is able to cope with his schoolwork. Because of all the work that um, Spelled have done with him this year, um, it's really just boosted his confidence hugely and given him that sort of extra confidence to believe in himself that he can be a part of a team and yeah, that he can play sport and participate and do well. We are getting more and more referrals from schools now as people become more aware of dyslexia and specific learning difficulties. It was only recognised by the Ministry in 2007, so um, it's, you know, people are are learning and coming on board and are very welcoming of the information in schools and we try and work to promote the information back to the schools where we can. Teachers can only do so much. Every single child learns differently and they can only really help the ones that learn a particular style. And so if, you don't, if you're not learning that particular style, um, you get left behind. I'd say I was amazed when I went straight to spell because immediately they seemed to understand exactly what I was going through. They'd have exercises already. They sort of aimed exactly at where my level was. Jamie was always really good at drawing and cartooning. And so I had spoken to Jamie's new classroom teacher. I'd suggested to her that was it acceptable for him to do it on the computer. Fortunately, Jamie's teacher was happy with that. She also said that he was able to write his stories in cartoon fashion. Each cell had to have a speech bubble in it. After I left high school, I moved on to South Seas Film and Television School and studied drama directing and screenwriting. Scene two there and take two. I found moving on out of high school and to a, um, a film school, the 
creative mentality there it was a, a, a lot different from high school and it sort of allowed a dyslexic brain to flourish and it was an environment where I could really um, focus and understand. I have never have thought that there would be education environments where I could understand it better than other people and sort of use the dyslexia to my advantage. After that I moved into some short films and some commercials and music videos and after doing that for a while I got a full-time job as a real estate photographer and a um, real estate photography photo editor, um, which I've been doing full time. Belinda's dyslexia wasn't recognised until she was assessed by Spelt when she was an adult. I went to my tutor once a week um, and she um, basically took me right back to basics. When I first started from Spelt, I was reading at a seven-year-old level and I'm now reading at a 12-year-old level, which is so much better. When I started my hairdressing career, um, I went to Winters a School of Hairdressing and Spelt helped me initially with my assignments and, and everything like that that I was given from them and um, the tutors at Winters were really, really great as well. Um, uh, I told them straight out that I had a learning disability and, and they were great about it. They were perfect uh, and top, perfect school to go to as well. initially. So it helped me with my written exams and everything like that and in the end she said, oh, I don't need to help you anymore. You know, it's, it's, I can understand everything that you're writing down in the exams and it's great. So it's been, Spelt has been absolutely brilliant. Now, you know, working from home, doing my business and um, doing my hairdressing and doing what I love. What I get out of my job is a lot of satisfaction that I'm making somebody feel good about themselves. So it's really, really awesome. Never give up. Never give up on your ambition. You always have the drive to try to, to excel and, and um, get the help that you need. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.